Now, on yours, do you usually have the... Um... It usually looks just like Rocky's there. Okay, cool. Hold on one second. Okay. Call the Broken Arrow um, City Council meeting to order. We have Pastor Rich Maganero here to say the pledge. Or the, <laughs> the prayer. <laughs> prayer. You can't say the pledge because Troop 151 is going to. Okay, guys, you ready? Here we Thanks, go. Sir. We can bow our heads for a word of prayer. Father God, we come to you tonight and ask for your guidance and wisdom and grace. We want to acknowledge you with the decisions that come before this council. We offer up thanksgiving in our hearts for the many blessings upon our city. We thank you for your hand protection over our city. As the scripture points out in Proverbs 10, 16, that the labor of the righteous leads to life. May those who labor for our city have a positive impact with the life that comes from you. In Proverbs 29, 2, it says, When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. May your hand of righteousness be upon those who lead our city. Please watch over our first responders. Please protect our citizens. Please be a shield around us. And may the plans you have for us be whispered in the ears of our leaders. And let your standard of hope, integrity, and love be the very fabric of our city. In the name of your son, in his name, a great leader, may we follow his example. Amen. 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 All right, Rich. Thanks, Thanks, All right, Thank Rich. You. All right, roll call. Green. Here. Ford. Here. Parks. Here. Gillespie. Here. Wimpy. Here. Uh, please stand and join Troop 151 for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. We have item I to be pulled for discussion. Is there any other items to be removed from the consent agenda? Item R. Your motion. And I will make a motion to approve consent min minus items I and R. A second. The motion a second. Roll call. Item I is approval of and authorization to execute an interlocal agreement between the County of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the City of Broken Arrow, Oklahoma, concerning county road and bridge maintenance and repair. Vice Mayor, members of council, Rocky Hinkle, Community Development Director, not Street Stormwater Director. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I put this on the agenda tonight. So this is the first um, first rendition of any interlocal agreement um, with Tulsa County that we've had since I've been here. Um, we currently have one with Wagner County, which is renewed every year. It allows the two entities to use e each other's resources um, to, to help out in a pinch, whether it's to plow uh, border streets, fill potholes, um, Earlier or later on this year, we will be uh, asking Tulsa County to have a reclaimer, which is a machine that's going to help us reclaim a couple of road, roads around the Vince Park area. Um, so it just allows us to use our resources with, uh, when, they're, when they're in need or if there's a pinch. Okay. Any questions? No. Make a motion to approve item I. I'll second that motion. And I am oh, going um, to recuse myself. Oh, I'm okay, I'm sorry. I need to call roll on that one. Uh, Green? Yes. Oh, Ford? Yes. Parks? Yes. Gillespie? Yes. Wimpy? Yes. Um, item R is approval of SP 1322-2024 special specific use permit event center um, on, it says Kenosha and one half mile east of Elm. 
actually on Main Street, so I'm confused yes. about that. But, um, <laughs> does someone want to speak on that? Yeah. This community about I'm recusing myself because I have an interest in this. So, yeah. Go in here. Good evening, Mayor, Council, City Manager. Um, SP 1322-2024 uh, is a specific use permit request um, for a uh, indoor play facility, um, which would be classified as a, um, sorry, <laughs> it's for an indoor facility, play facility to be placed in the downtown mixed use zoning district, which as the mayor said is here on Main Street. Um, the applicant is proposing an indoor play facility where children can interact with different play scenarios such as like a dental office, grocery store, those types of things. Um, this specific use or specific type of use is not uh, specified in the table of allowed use of the zoning ordinance, um, but it's most similar to a gen indoor general recreation facility. Excuse me. No. Uh, this requires a specific use permit in the DM zoning district. Um, the specific use permit was reviewed by the Planning Commission on March 14th. No one spoke in favor of or in opposition to the request, but in the meeting there was an additional uh, request by the applicant to uh, permit a daycare use. Um, this would be a situation where there would be like a Mother's Day out, that kind of thing, where um, the facility would be used temporarily as a daycare, even though that's not primarily um, its function. So after reviewing the information prevent, presented in the staff report and by the application, applicant the planning commission recommended appro approval with a 5-0 vote per staff recommendation with the additional approval of a daycare use I'd be happy to answer any questions okay. any questions i don't have any questions i can say that it just kind of follows up from when i was in high school that facility was used for our uh, get together for all the uh, teens and the city fathers at that time <coughs> designated that as our teen hangout area so we had dances there and everything so it's nice to see it continue on thanks Aww, for the history. can, yeah, thanks can for you the give history. us a demonstration of what kind of dances <laughs> <laughs> my, my comment was professional <laughs> i'll make a motion to approve um, sp 001322 dash 224. second we have a motion and a second roll call Well, we are very excited about this. Yes. Yes. And congratulations. First time business owner. Somebody won't knock on the door for her. Oh, yes. No, we'll no. Let her back in. Or leave her there. Did she go outside? <laughs> <laughs> Items 7, public hearings, appeals, presentations, recognitions, and awards. 7A is a presentation of service award pin to Vice Mayor Christy Gillespie. I'm going to read this certificate for you. There are no where as is. Oh, darn. No. <laughs> an, appreci an, appre ah, an appreciation for your five years of service, Christy Gillespie. With this certificate, we hereby recognize four years your years, oh my goodness, your years of service to the city of Broken Arrow and are honored to, to thank you for all you have done to enhance our great community. community. There's that. Thank you. Oh, wait, I, can, can, I have a, to your lapel. can I have a picture? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> somebody Dan? take our picture. Yeah, somebody take our picture. All the city council. Oh, you want us all in there? Yeah, we're exciting. Exciting. I know how to get a 20 year pen. I'm glad you got a 5 year pen. of Packard Winch 100th year anniversary. Yeah. 
Mr. Rogers feels I know you're just like, I feel like we should like start that's talking a bigger, right that's, that's a, a bigger big deal. deal than five years. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So we have a, a certificate of recognition for you all as well in honor of Packard Winch. Which, why is that so hard for me to say? I'm so sorry. This certificate is presented to Packard Winch in recognition of its uh, century-long commitment to excellence, innovation, and steadfast dedication to the highest standards of quality in the industry. Congratulations on 100 years of being in business. All right. of activity happening um, leading up to or in, in honor of this huge accomplishment um, they've got a car show on the 13th they've got um, I, there's a list so do you guys have it on your Facebook page can you put it on your Facebook page yeah they have a list of activities that are going to be going on in the city to celebrate um, their achievement and it thank you guys for choosing Broken Arrow and remaining here and continuing to invest in our city yes. year after year. Yeah. Thank you very much for all the support. Yeah. We do appreciate it. Okay. Okay, item 7C is presentation of an annual report by representatives of Cox Cable. Uh, I, oh. I'm so sorry, Cox Communications, <laughs> a cable service provider with a non-exclusive franchise with the City of Broken Arrow, and uh, regarding the services provided by Cox in operation of cable systems. Connor. Hi. Hey. you got to bring it. We've had some exciting things. So I know, I know. I hope your presentation is There are exciting. a lot of great, timely things to share, though, so I'm excited about this tonight. I appreciate that we always have the chance to kind of update <laughs> yearly, um, but there are some, some big things to share. So. Um, just a reminder as we as we jump in, I, I like to talk about the company because I, I think it's some some cool facts about us, uh, and I think we've shared these in the past. Um, Cox is actually 126 years old. I look forward to the day that we can celebrate 100 years of Broken Arrow. We're yes, not there yet, but um, we were founded in 1898 in Dayton, Ohio, when uh, Governor James and Cox bought the Dayton Daily News. So we started in newspaper, we went to radio, we went to TV, we went to high-speed internet, the products that you know today. Um, today, we're a full-scale communications company. We also have automotive media services. Um, we're always purchasing new companies and looking at growing the business. Kelly Blue Book is a Cox Enterprise-owned company. OpenGov, which I know the City of Broken Arrow uses, is a Cox-owned company now. Axios, the online newspaper. That's just a breadth of the, the different ways that we've grown over the last 126 years. Um, today, and here locally in Broken Arrow, you know us as Cox Communications. Residential service, we provide gig service to, to every single uh, resident of Broken Arrow. We provide Cox business services to your businesses here. So that's full scale um, cloud services, that's technology, that's not just connectivity, it's really everything you need as a business today to um, go through the IT space. Cox Media is an advertising arm of our business that helps um, your businesses, your nonprofits get the word out about the things that they're doing well. Um, about our network, we're in 18 states across the country. You see a map up there of some of the different areas that we, we touch. The benefit that we have here in Broken Arrow is that we're at the center of it all. Um, every line comes into us, which gives us redundancy. It gives us the ability to, to weather any kind of downturn that we might have or a, a cut along the line somewhere along our national backbone. We know that at the end of the day, we're going to have reliable service here, and we're going to have the ability to, to connect um, you all in the future, too. So, uh, Cox has invested. 16 billion in the next 10 years into our network. Um, we always, you know, want to make sure that we're upgrading for the speeds of the future. Across our network, every customer should have the ability to access one gig speeds. Um, so that's that's something we pride ourselves on. We don't just upgrade bits and pieces. We want to make sure that every customer has the same experience. Um, we're future proofing right now. We're looking at the speeds of the future. Someday we're going to launch 10 gig service. We know that. So we're, we're already making those investments to make sure that um, citizens of Broken Arrow, your businesses here, have the connectivity they need um, for the things to come as we, we continue to, to move online and have um, growing bandwidth needs. Uh, every year in Broken Arrow, we actually invest about $6 million to upgrade our network. So, again, reliability 
future proofing. That's the name of the game and why we continue to invest in, in what we have here in Broken Arrow. Um, like I said, really timely updates that I wanna share with you all. Several different pieces around connectivity were brought to light, especially during the pandemic as we, we all moved home to do education online, do work online, um, real broadband expansion, and also the digital divide that we saw with affordability. There's two really exciting updates that I'd love to, to share with you all. So um, real broadband expansion, that may not be an issue we see as much in Broken Arrow, but it is a really important issue that we're facing across the state. So I just wanted to take a couple of different a couple of minutes to share what's happening with the state, what's happening with Cox. Um, Cox is incredibly committed to rural broadband expansion right now. We've invested millions of our own capital to serve new communities that haven't had access. Um, like we said, Broken Arrow citizens have access to one gig speeds, but there's areas across the state that truly don't have service right now. Um, we know that when we build to a new community, 86% of the residents say that their lives have improved, right? Um, educational opportunities, um, healthcare opportunities through telehealth. We see economic optimism um, with the ability to work from home and do things online and in these new communities we serve. Uh, so just, just a picture of, of some of the different things that are happening. In addition to our investing our, our own money in, in building out some of these new communities, we're partnering with the Oklahoma Broadband Office. Um, the state has about $1.2 billion to spend over the next couple of years on, on rural broadband expansion. Um, so there's a lot that's gonna happen in this space over the next couple of years. Cox has actually partnered um, in this first round of funding, which is about 374 million. Um, and, and again, these are areas that we've wanted to go for years, but at the end of the day, the investment that we, we wanted to make, we just couldn't quite make it as a sustainable investment. You know, you need to, to make sure that you can maintain and upgrade that infrastructure for the long run. So partnering with the state here, we're super excited about um, extending our services into these new areas. I said before, you know, we don't think of this as a broken area issue, but as you all continue to grow into Wagner County um, and other areas of Tulsa County, we actually saw about $15 million be dedicated in this first round of funding to areas in Tulsa County and Wagner County alone. So um, it's again, preparing the way for areas that you want to expand into in the future. It's not gonna be a hindrance for um, new people that wanna move to those areas or businesses that wanna move to those areas. We're always looking at ways to grow in, in those areas in particular. So. Um, Another thing to mention that I really wanted to call some attention to today, the Affordable Connectivity Program was another program that was created under the American Rescue Plan. Um, the Affordable Connectivity Program was um, intended to address affordability of internet services. So uh, a customer could receive a $30 discount off of their monthly bill um, uh, to you know, meet the needs of, of internet connectivity. That program was funded, as I said, on the American Rescue Plan with no long-term source of funding. So this program actually is going to end in May. Um, there was a, a window of time where Congress was considering re-extending it, but it's not looking like that's gonna happen at this point any longer. So in Oklahoma and in, in our region in particular, that, that discount actually was $75 a month because we're here on tribal lands. So we had a number of Broken Arrow residents, maybe about 10% um, were subscribed through Cox services under the affordable connectivity or the American connectivity program. Um, we are, are still committed to digital equity and affordability moving forward. There's a plan to, to make sure that we continue to offer those services. Cox, even before ACP, um, offered two different affordability tiers. One was called Connect to Compete and one was called Connect Assist. So Connect to Compete is a 995 plan it's offered to low-income households that have a K through 12 student in your home. That, that plan, like I said, it existed before COVID. We had it about 10, 10 years before um, the pandemic. It'll exist after ACP. So we're gonna continue to meet those needs of affordability. Um, Connect Assist is a $30 plan for households that don't have a K through 12 student in the home. So like I said, we're doing outreach to all those customers that had ACP. We're letting them know about options for the future. We're trying to make that transition easy as they move forward, but it is something to be aware of. Um, if you know others that are, are experiencing this, this issue, right, as they, as they lose this, this benefit off their bill, um, they're, they're solutions. So please keep that in mind. If we can connect folks with resources, we're, we're looking to do that moving forward post ACP. To wrap things up, um, oh, one other exciting thing on affordability. We just recently launched Cox Mobile, which if you haven't seen anything about that, it's a new mobile line, as, it, as you can imagine. It rides over the Verizon network, actually, so the same reliability you'd expect. But when you compare it with your internet bill, 
you can see some significant discounts. So this will be another tool that we use for customers leaving that ACP benefit. Um, I highly encourage you, if you're a Cox customer, this is only for Cox customers that have internet. Um, if you're a Cox internet customer, take a look at Cox Mobile because it may reduce um, your bill significantly in the future and is part of what we're using um, to answer some of those affordability concerns and questions moving forward. As you really look at like your total telecom bill, um, you know, what can we do to, to shrink that for you overall? At the end, um, just again wanted to share, we're committed to Broken Arrow. Even though in 18 states, we're a family-owned company, we're privately held, the Cox family may, makes it clear that we want to take care of our customers, our employees, and the communities we serve. So um, we want to invest in the communities we're in. We have a Cox Charities program that makes grants to nonprofits uh, and teachers as well. Uh, exciting news, that uh, nonprofit program actually just opened April yep, 1st. April 1st. Mm -hmm. So. Um, for any nonprofit that's looking for a grant of up to $10,000 for ongoing programs, um, I'll send you all some, some details on that um, so you can make sure that Broken Arrow nonprofits are continuing to, to participate in that. But uh, all in all, that amounts to about $1.5 million in cash and then in kind contributions we, we do with nonprofits across our Northeast Oklahoma region. Um, $25,000 we've, we've contributed to Broken Arrow Performing Arts Center. Um, and then we're strongly committed to economic development as well. I, I want to reiterate that. You know, I know you all have great plans in the future for the Innovation District and other sites around um, your, your city. We want to be a partner in helping you attract those businesses and, and really highlighting the services we can provide. Again, Cox Business, they provide connectivity, but it's really a full, a full service solution to anything that a business would need with connectivity. So we want to we be an asset. We want to partner with you all as you, as you look at business attraction and retention here in, in your city. Uh, Six graduates, six graduates of the Leadership Broken Arrow. We're super excited about that. And then, again, Cox Charities, $86,000 has been de dedicated specifically to Broken Arrow Public Schools teachers um, to support needs in their classroom. Um, Connect to Compete, again, that, that bullet at the end refers to 8,500 families across our region that we've connected to the Internet with our, our low-income $10 plan each month. So. Um, we're excited about serving Broken Arrow. We're excited about everything we're doing here. We're always looking to partner. If there's ever a constituent question, anything we can do to address um, a need that you see here in the city, please reach out to us. We're happy to partner and, and continue to support you all in all the great things you're doing. So, thanks. Hi, Any questions? Thank you. Thank okay. you. Um, item. 7D, presentation of post-event update for, for the 2023 Scott Fest Festival. You are not Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> but we like your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have to raise the mic. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm, I'm here this evening to introduce you, I think some of you know him, to introduce Chris Morrison, who's the Deputy Director of Scott Fest, to do an update for the 2023 Scott Fest. Chris, the floor is yours. I know the technology works, so do I need to switch this on or move it on through this? Yes. Okay, perfect. Well, good evening, uh, and uh, thank you for having us. First of all, uh, I want to start off by uh, apologizing that it's taken so long to get you this uh, post-event update, although it's somewhat apt that uh, it's happening this week because the 6th of April is National Tartan Day uh, in the United States, um, which is a, it goes back to the Declaration of Our Growth, which many um, believe to be a precursor to the Declaration of Independence. So the Declaration of Our Growth was on the 6th of April of 1320. So, so quite, a, quite a while ago. Um, but, uh, you know, again, we had a, we had a fantastic year um, in 2023. Um, there were challenges, there were things that weren't, went really, really well. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about some of those, but what I'm also going to do is start to talk a little bit about looking forward to, to 2024 and how we move forward this year. Um, first thing is the uh, attendance. Attendance was down slightly, um, and we expected that. That was anticipated. There were a couple of reasons for that. The first one was that we didn't have an A-lister this year. We know Graham McTavish, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> And, you know, we think that the cost of living, you know, if we think that that, was a, that had an impact. People of less discretionary income, festivals are, are, are suffering. Um, actually, when we look at Scottish and, and, and Celtic festivals throughout the United States, 
the vast majority of them are on the decline. In COVID, about 30% of the Scottish festivals died and, and aren't coming back. Um, Scottfest was one of the few that actually grew through COVID. Um, second thing that's important is that, you know, in that number, in that 41,000 number, only about 20, 25% of the attendees were from Broken Arrow. Now, when you start to break that down, you know, what we did was we looked at ticket buyers, we looked at what the zip codes were, what that looked like. When you break that down, that means about 10,000 people came from the city of Broken Arrow, um, which in, in some regards is disappointing. In other regards, it's really exciting because it means that given the size of our city, you know, if there's that, you know, that amount of population didn't make it out, then we have a, a huge opportunity to continue to grow the, grow the festival. Now, you know, when we say they came from the city of Broken Arrow, or 10% came from the city of Broken Arrow, sure, there was a lot of folks came from throughout Green Country, but we did also have, you know, quite a few folks come in from different states and different countries. Um, you know, some, there were some folks who came from, I believe it was uh, Germany, um, and they were just travelling through, but they'd heard of Scottfest, and they made, made this one of their, their destinations. Um, financially, we did lose, we did lose some, some money um, this year. <coughs> And there's a number of reasons for that. Part of that was the, the investment that we made in infrastructure. So the picnic tables, and we know there are various events throughout the, the city that, that leverage those, those picnic tables. Uh, we also tried to look at things like increased shuttles. So we ran a shuttle this year from the Promenade Mall. Fortunately, it didn't work. It had virtually no pickup, um, on, no pun intended. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, that was... Uh, that was a bit of a disappointment, but as we'll talk a play into kind of how we look at that. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, hotel rooms. So we had a fairly significant pickup from in hotel rooms. Again, that has, a tip, that has the, the impact on the, on the area. We did also leverage River Spirit Casino, who have been our presenting sponsors for, for quite some time. Um, I think that we've, we've talked uh, in previous sessions that we do find a slight challenge with the hotels in, in Broken Arrow, just with the lack of facilities at the, the hotels, whether that be restaurants and bars, and also from shuttles. Uh, we were made aware of uh, recently um, some of the, the Ubers from, from the different uh, hotels down to the Rose District, uh, which plays in nicely to talking a little bit about 2024. So 2024, um, we made the announcement today, press release went out today. Um, we are moving from the events park to Central Park in line with the amphitheatre build out. Um, we want to thank uh, the city manager uh, and others that have worked. We had hoped that 2025 would be the year that that would happen, um, but things happen. We understand that Central Park is going to be um, a pretty, pretty good lo location for us. Um, there are increased uh, trees, which, is, which will help us from shade. Uh, it is a better location from the perspective of people know where it is. Um, they know where, you know where they're going. And, you know, sometimes a joke, right? When we moved from River Spirit, um, you know, it felt like people needed passports to come out to Broken Arrow. I think that there's probably the same... Sorry, when we moved from River, River West, people needed passports to come out here. It's kind of the same thing. You know, when we, we talk about the events part, even some folks within Broken Arrow are kind of like, Oh, I don't go out there. That's that's too far. <laughs> um, so we're we're hopeful that Rose District will, will have a, an impact there. Um, we also think that the community centre is going to be be a bonus. Some of the, the the AC with some of our dancers, especially lots of the, the kids, that will be that will be beneficial. However, you know there are there are concerns that we do have um, as we move into this this new location. Anytime you move, a, you know, you, you two things can kill an event. One is moving the location. One is moving the date. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the date is the same, uh, but moving location is a is a risk. Even though it's such a small a small shift, so we will have to advertise and make sure that that gets out there. Um, also, the um, we, we put a post up today a little bit prematurely. The post went out with this, the press release before it kind of got shared with some of the news agencies. So it was up for about twenty minutes. It's back up now. Um, but when that went out, the number one thing that came back from folks was parking. You know that. Rose District, this area is not going to be able to handle parking, um, and so we're working through through that. We have some some things that we're looking at, whether that be the Performing Arts Centre, whether that be the Arrowhead Softball com uh, Complex. We, we need to figure out whether there's a game that week, 
I'm looking in this direction. <laughs> uh, and then, you know, there's also the NSU uh, side of things. And as I mentioned, Ubers, Lyfts, that sort of thing from the hotels. We'll find a solution, but, you know, as you, you know, perception is reality. And if the perception is that we're not going to be able to get in there because there's, too, there's not enough parking and there's too much uh, stuff going on, then we may have an Im impact on attendance. We want to make sure that we get that message out to citizens of Broken Arrow, to people in, in neighbouring uh, areas. Actually, th this is going to be, be really good. Um, also, we've, we've talked about this. I, I found out uh, just before we came in here, uh, so squad, we had, we had, unfortunately, are not going to be able to, to drill into the, the concrete there uh, at Central Park. That's a problem for us because it means that we can't get the big tent up in that area. Now the tent company are saying, "Look, we can't we can't do this unless we get, uh, you know, they're, they're, we, we looked at using some of the the barrels and, and things. They're saying we'll only go to 60, uh, 40 by 60, uh, which means we can't get the big tent. That's a potential problem just for heat or if it rains. Um, so we need to look at you know ways to mitigate that. One of that is potentially multiple tents, but then we start getting into to fire considerations and and other things along that lines. Uh, just a quick one on the layout. You know, the, we're going to utilize the, the area. So if, we're, if you're familiar with the Rooster Days layout, you have that sort of grass uh, space uh, on the corner. We're going to leverage that for the Highland Athletics. Um, we're going to use um, the, the sort of community center uh, area for you know, that parking spot just outside there for the, for the two main stages. We will have vendors and things inside uh, the area, as well as the the <coughs> Highland dancers and, and some of those other folks, I think that you know there's there's 27 acres roughly. Uh, we typically use at the events park, you know, about 30 acres, um, but we're confident that we can we can make that work. So, uh, again, thank you for your support. Thank you for everything you do. We're excited to, to to move this forward this year. We do. We will. You know, have some some thoughts and things that we want to share with you sure. as we get closer to the event and understand. Happy to take any questions if you if you have any. Somebody asked him a question, so he'll keep talking. What's what's the date? <laughs> Sorry. The what's the date again? It's going to be the thirteenth and the fifteenth okay. of September. <clears throat> well, I'm glad we found a solution of some sort because it is important to have you guys continue on, and so I didn't want to see you guys not be able to. Okay. We were the same. You know, we we had a lot of folks. Um, you know, over the years, we've had lots of folks come and reach out to us and say, "Look, you know, we considered here, have you considered there?" And social media has been has been crazy the last uh, last few weeks. As soon as the the announcement about the events park shut, we've had. I I I'm on the Scott Fest Facebook account, and we must get about thirty messages a day from people going, "What's happening? Where's it going?" Yeah. Um, and we we wanted to make sure that we found somewhere that we think makes sense. Uh, and we'll bring people out, and, and potentially this location, uh, you, you know, has a lot of upside. Um, people know this area, and, and you know, I was joking a little bit about the events park, but the reality is, you know, I think that folks will, um, you know, some people don't go out there just because of the drink driving. They don't want to drive their car out. They sure. don't want to do the, the shuttle. Whereas a lot more comfortable in the Rose District, know know that area, know the know the bars, can kind of go on to things after the festival's over. Mm -hmm. We are also, there is also like a little bit of concern about noise and, and that sort of thing. I think that's natural in any event that's going to be held in this area. Mm -hmm. um, we could be in the middle of a field, 30 miles, nobody around us, and, and someone would, would be a little bit concerned about it. So we'll just, we'll, we'll do our best to mitigate that uh, and work with any of the residents around Well, it. Rooster Days has concerts going on for exactly. yeah. two to three days. Well, so. and, you know, so many events you attend, I mean, pe people pay a lot for parking. I mean, so local people, I mean, you could Uber there and back and mm. pay less than what you might yeah. pay for parking in some, you know, other cities. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe promote that, like yeah. actually Ubering there and back. And well, intent this year, so, so in, in the last, last couple of years, you know, we've, and, and this is part of the, the balance in that, right? So in the last past couple of years, we have charged for parking, uh, a small fee out there. This year, it's unlikely we're going to do that. But obviously, if we if we don't charge for parking, then that leaves a hole in the budget. So we just yeah. need to we need to balance that. I see that the local news has also picked up on it. You know, I've seen it on several newscasts. That's which why is good. that is why we um, we posted it and took it down this morning because our PR folks told us that if you post it and you leave it on social media, then it's no longer news. So the news stations won't pick it up. So we, oops, we I took noticed it down they picked and, it up so far. Uh, ah. Yeah, we took it down. And, yeah. yeah. 
So it's going to be on the news again tonight, 10.30, channels. Great. Yeah. So the big green space, like when you talk about your large tent, can you not utilize? No. There's not enough space beyond the creek there? there it's, it's not. It's, it's not it's flat. It's not, not flat. flat. Oh, okay. And, you know, the only places you could really put that big tent are the, the back area, mm -hmm. probably the athletics, and then that front area. Got it. And we need the power as well for the stages and, yeah. and all that. So. I think we would, we would um, if, if we could get the, the permission to drill into that, you know, obviously we would, the tent company has said, we'll fill that, we'll fill the concrete. I also understand um, some of the concerns around the engineering side of it and, you know, damaging the concrete. But, you know, if that's not an option, then we'll need to find an alternative. Did you have comments? I do, I do Mayor Mr. Council. I just first off want to thank Chris. He's been very understanding considering the fact that you had such a large important event and the first thing I reassured him was is that and I want everybody to hear this Broken Air wants Scott Fest to be here for for many many years to make this a permanent home obviously there's a few challenges whenever you change and he's he's uh, enumerated several of those and so I've got the special events team working I you know there's lots of parking downtown uh, they're talking about transportation if there's any way we could help them with this because we impacted them in terms of where they were at I'd like to try to get to yes, and so I'm going to task Rocky and, and the special events team to see how we can try to work together on that because we have lots of spaces just in the Rose District. Plus, it was mentioned, our folks know where to park when they come to Rooster Days. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's not like those that would be coming don't know where to go, but obviously I think that we need to try to help there as, as well as these so, other areas. So we'll, we'll be on top of it. All right. If I may, Mayor. Yes. We're going to continue to work with him to see if there's any way we can get the tent put up. <clears throat> Currently, obviously, he's addressed it well. We are really concerned about what it will do to the pavement. So we're going to work with him and his team to see if there's any way that we can work around that and get this to work. Okay. okay? Awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Chris. Thank you. 7E, presentation and annual programming update by Arts OK. Lori Yo. I'm going to raise this up from yeah. Mr. Brassfield. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council. Okay. Well, as my um, good friend Ryan Bays likes to say, I'm super excited to be here, and I'm excited to keep this momentum going with this positive news. Um, at this time, I'm going to be very brief. I'm going to introduce um, three very important people with Arts OK and Arts 302. We have Melinda Klontz, Jennifer Deal, and Caleb Ricketts. And I'm going to let them take it away and tell you all the great things they're doing right now. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> she didn't know she was talking. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to tell them about the right? <laughs> You're the division of duties. So. First of all, um, I don't know if many of you in the room understand how much the city has done to make the gallery come to life and it, it bears be repeating over and over and every time we get the chance we want to say thank you but um, I'm here just to support my staff so I'm going to turn it over to them and then we'll tell you about something exciting that's coming up later I think some of you had some fun there last year and hopefully we'll return this year so yeah, some, someone celebrated a birthday there last year I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we know that you guys want us to be up here for about five minutes, and so we wanted to be respectful, definitely, of your time. And so we gave you the handouts because I don't think we'll be able to go through all the numbers. Um, but Caleb did a great job of looking up numbers for you guys um, so that you can get a feel for what's hopefully what's been going on in our space. I'm going to let Caleb go ahead and start us out. He is in charge of all the social media that we do and the website. I get compliments all the time on all that. But he, the biggest piece of why I hired him was ha to handle the education component. And so I'm going to let him speak to that education component now. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Councilors, and Mr. Spurgeon. Uh, my name is Caleb Ricketts. I'm the Program Director. I uh, just want to tell you a little bit uh, about um, our art classes and education and camps and all that. Um, so 
Uh, at Arts 302, we do offer our multi-week courses and one-time classes. And what's really cool is that since we started offering programming in May uh, 2022, we have offered 273 separate classes, which has included over 2,000 students, which I think is quite incredible. Um, and I'm also very happy to report that we have given out uh, close to $15,000 um, in full tuition scholarships to 201 children, um, age pre-K all the way to high school, uh, for all of those classes. And that actually just, um, I believe, makes up 10% uh, um, of our revenue. Um, also, for the clay classes, that's something I definitely want to mention, because that makes up about 70% of our classes each block. Um, of those clay classes alone, each semester, we have 85% capacity on all of those clay classes for wheel throwing and hand building. And all of those wheel throwing courses in the evening have a wait list of six to 15 people. So we are quickly over, um, we are already at capacity basically for the wheel throwing studio. Only classes that don't fill are classes offered during the normal uh, working time of eight to five. Um, so also wanna tell you about our children's art camps. Uh, we offer, we started offering these elementary art camps uh, during spring, summer, and fall breaks. We have four teaching artists that work and rotate with, our, with uh, up to 44 kids. Uh, since we've opened, we've held 11 camps with 273 campers. Uh, it's been amazing that our, our first summer we had about 10 campers, and then last summer we were we had some with 40, some with 20, oh, wow. but we are on track to sell out all four of our camps uh, this summer uh, with uh, 176 uh, participants. A lot of fun, silly stuff that got going on. Dinosaur musicals, outer space <laughs> stuff. Um, Last thing I wanted to chat about would be some of our notable programs. I'm going to skip Big Idea Studio and have uh, Miss Jennifer talk about that in just a moment. Uh, but the 302 Children's Choir, uh, that is my passion project as a musician myself. Um, I really wanted there to be a community choir open to people that weren't just in our wonderful school system. Because uh, I, I do know that Broken Arrow does have a pretty large homeschool community as well that doesn't get that opportunity. Um, so each semester we have 20 to 24 kids uh, that are a part of that. Uh, surprisingly, 60% of those 24 kids are actually kids that are in Broken Arrow Elementary Schools uh, that are that love choir and want another chance to be in it as well, which is beautiful. They're just like me <laughs> that 15 years ago. Uh, Mini Art Explorers is our uh, wonderful preschool program that we've offered. Currently that's been on, uh, in the mornings, uh, on, on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., but we're gonna try to have something on Saturdays to reach uh, the non-homeschool moms and that there aren't working. And the last thing I wanted to mention, if you don't know about date night wheel throwing, that's one of my favorite programs <laughs> that I have started at Arts at 302. Uh, rather than just the six week course, that is a couple signing up for a two hour adventure on the wheel. Um, so all of your fantasies and all that can happen. Uh, and they sell out very quickly. Um, and they're a blast. And we're gonna have several more this summer. This is like will... our own ghost moment. I was gonna say, is Patrick yeah, Swayze gonna be there? Yeah. I, I always say, uh, when I post <laughs> about it, I say Patrick now. Swayze not included. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. But uh, yeah, that's all for me. And I just wanna say thank you all so much for your support. Uh, now over our first couple of years, I feel like we are organized internally and I'm trying to push us out more in the community and do more community events. So Jennifer's gonna talk more about that. Okay. Thanks, Caitlin. That's good. Yeah, it's good. I just want to put a little plug. The reason I had him add that piece in about the clay studio is because in April, I'm getting ready to have a conversation, Melinda and I, and Councillor Green about what phase two looks like. And the very top thing at my list, if any of you have seen my list of things I want, is a clay <laughs> studio that's probably at least two or three times the size of what we've got, because that is hugely where the demand is. And I'm so excited that that's the case. So, but I'm gonna go ahead and tell you a little bit about one more, bit, one more notable program up there, and that is Big Ideas Studio. So I started the adaptive art class at the high school and I knew when I moved into this space that I wanted something for special needs people and special needs adults. Actually, Holly Green was one of my students back in the day. Pretty exciting. So, so we did, we're able to start a program this past fall. We have special needs adults coming from Gatesway and from another program. And then this spring, we've opened it up to the community and we're starting to take enrollment. I want that program to grow into a big afternoon and evening of studio time where our special needs people have a place to come and make art. So come over sometime and check it out. But I'm really, really excited about that program. So then if you look, we, we still have our very first program moving into the 
building, and I know that Mr. Spurgeon remembers this, was our Kristen Chenoweth's Artist of Promise. I didn't even have furniture in the building, and I was determined that we were going to have that program start. And we are still going strong. At this point, we've served at least 95 kiddos. We've had um, at least 25 artists that have come through and work with these kiddos. And I have a staff of three people right now that love those kids. That is a place where they can come. They are accepted. You know, sometimes their behavior isn't what we want it to be. And they, you know, when they're at school, they get the negative, 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 because that's just the kid. But we want this to be a place where they're safe and they're accepted and they're loved. And that's what my staff does in that program. And I'm hoping that one will grow. But we found that keeping it small is what's best for those kids. And we want what's best for those kids. So Kristen Chenoweth, Artist of Promise. We're going to be in the Rooster Days Parade, by the way. So watch for our float. We're excited about that. The gallery, oh my gosh, you guys, it has just, it, it has been phenomenal. And the numbers there you can look at, we have had um, 18 different shows. And I was a little worried about this. I, I didn't know that I would be able to get the quality. And man, I mean, every show just blows me out of the water. And then um, we have had over, see, I don't have my glasses on, over 600 local artists have gotten to come through. <laughs> that gallery which I think is really cool because we have local professional artists but we also have opportunity for community artists whether they're pre-k or they're professional or they're senior citizen they have an opportunity to come and be and and be in that space and feel like real artists so come every chance you can Thursday night we have an opening for the Green Country Watercolor Society it is gorgeous you will be amazed Caleb added some things about some of the other shows that we have coming up. We have a composition of teachers, that's people from my tribe that are gonna have a show. Um, we also have the five by five show. If you didn't come to that last year, come in August, it's five by five paintings for $55 anyone can afford that and it all goes 100 percent of that goes to support us um, and then we have in conjunction with the rose festival the in my own backyard show this year and that's the one that will have the pre-k all the way through senior citizen we also have turned our gift shop into an artist co-op stop by and check out that it has some stuff that's a little bit more easy to afford but we have a group of 13 14 artists that are selling their wares I have a couple of pieces in there, so. <laughs> okay, and then, like Caleb said, we're getting out into the community now. We feel like we have things kind of rolling in the building. We want more people to know about us. We're going to be set up at Rooster Days. We were set, we'll set up at Bounce BA. We were out for the Christmas event in New York, New Orleans Square. If you have an event you'd like to see us involved in, please reach out and let us know. We also are doing an open studio event that happens on the second Saturday of every month. Stop by. You can stop by if you're a grown-up. You can stop by with your whole family and make art together. I get goosebumps when I'm at that particular event because it's so cool watching those families making art together. So, Any questions? Oh, Melinda was going to tell you about that thing where we could... Oh. I was just like, let's. We all just want to get up and go to Arts at 302 now. <laughs> Yay! I mean, I love it so much. Y'all's passion for for what you do. Well, it's I. You know, I didn't know at first. I tell people that I had my dream job for 30 some years, inspiring creativity in kids. And some of you may have heard me say that before. I was a little nervous about this job, but I feel like it's turning into my second dream job, where I get to inspire creativity in a whole community. Yep. And man, that gives me goosebumps every time. <clears throat> yeah. I will tell you, since um, my first opportunity to be there with my onboarding, just uh, the passion from Jennifer and Caleb was just uh, just overwhelming. And uh, I, too, enjoy the arts and music and all these things. So when the opportunity came to be on the board, I was, um, I was thrilled and jumped at the opportunity to do that. So I look forward to working with them going forward. I know there's going to be a lot of great things happening. Um, I love this. Uh, I'm looking forward to helping out in any way I can and, and getting the word out. and continue to see R302 be a success. Well, thank you. And I, I will reiterate what Melinda said. I, I feel spoiled being a part of an art center in this community because you take such good care of me and give us so much support. So thank you for all of that. 
Did you want to tell them about mimosas, or have we run out of time? Just yeah, go ahead. Mimosas ahead. on Maine. <laughs> yeah, your phone's out. Like, no, 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 tell us. July 13th. Okay. Okay. July 13th. And we should, in the next It'll couple of weeks, we selfish. should be pushing out the sponsorship information. Yeah. It'll be similar to last year. We're just going to build on what was an amazing event mm -hmm. and make money because we want our doors to be open forever and ever and ever. One last thing, if you all do know children in the community that could benefit from our scholarship program, funnel them to us because sometimes people don't know about it. And so the more people that can tell people about it, that we're going to be able to help so much more people. So anybody you can tell, just thank you so much. Thank, thank you all. Yes. Mayor, if I can, yes. just real yes. quick. Um, on behalf of my folks, I, I want to say thank you. I mean, I've got to know Melinda the last couple of years in the Arts OK for all that they do for our community, and she's great to work with. Um, I, I, I like to, I think the city's transparent, but probably the most transparent person in the whole city is Jennifer, because you walk by, you know what she's doing anytime, anytime, <laughs> anytime that she's we there. We can see it. Uh, same thing with Caleb. Um, the week of the 22nd of this month, one of the 30 meetings that I have scheduled is with her and the Arts OK folks to talk about phase two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that'd be one of the discussions that we have, just a general overview of, of exactly what they'd like to see to go there. And then we'll get our consultant to look at the, uh, the, the project costs. But I, would, I could envision either whether council decides to expand this building or actually build a new city hall. I mean, there's the model yeah. in terms of having something that's beautiful that would match downtown. So mm -hmm. I love working with you guys. Keep up the good work. Yep. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Um, all right. Um, item eight is citizens' opportunity to address the council. There are none. Item nine is general council business. Nine A consideration, discussion, and possible approval of an authorization to execute resolution number 1567, a resolution of the Broken Arrow City Council authorizing a joint application for the opi opioid abatement grant um, between the City of Broken Arrow <coughs> and the Broken Arrow Public Schools. Chief Barry Hill. Mayor Remy, City Council, Mr. Spurgeon, City Manager. I uh, come before you tonight uh, asking for uh, approval for a resolution. Um, the background on this is the state of Oklahoma sued the opioid manufacturers and distributors for the role of the opioid crisis and subsequently settlement funds were available. The abatement board oversees distribution of these funds. The city of Broken Arrow and the Broken Arrow Public Schools are co-applying for a grant uh, to mitigate some of the opioid crisis. Um, we are a sub-grantee of this particular item. Uh, the schools and us are both looking at uh, increasing the youth outreach programs, us using our youth outreach officer, the schools expanding uh, operation aware and some of the programs they have to increase education and opioid uh, reduction uh, for future use by uh, kids in the schools. Be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Good job, Chief. No questions? Good thing. No questions, but I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the authorization to execute this resolution. Second. Sorry, Sorry Johnny. A motion and a second. Roll call. I was quick on the clicker. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank you. Item 9B, consideration discussion <coughs> and possible award of the lowest <coughs> responsible bid to R&L Construction and approve the execution of a construction contract for Wolf Creek Drainage Improvement Project. Pat Wilson. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Councilors, Mr. Spurgeon. I'm Patrick Wilson, the Stormwater Division Manager for the City of Broken Arrow. The Wolf Creek Drainage Project improvements that is in front of you today for consideration is replacing a 60-inch storm sewer that runs on Boston and on Beach. Now, where this is at is south of Washington and west of Aspen. The, this storm sewer was originally installed, installed in the 1970s. Um, the existing pipe is currently has issues and there is some failing in it. Um, and right now we do have Beach Avenue closed. In the month of February, we did go through and close it with conjunction with Streets and Stormwater and the city manager's office. We did our investigation. And since that road closure, staff has talked with multiple residents and the HOA and they've expressed their frustrations with the road closure, which I can understand it's a, they do use those streets a lot. I have met with or talked with the HOA, offered to go to any HOA meetings, make presentations. As of this date, it has not happened. 
I do foresee that happening in the future. Um, but both Boston and Beach will need to be closed for this roadway con uh, reconstruction for the storm sewer. It's a 60 inch pipe, middle of the street, and this is just the way it was built in the 1970s. There was n nothing we can do about it to date to move this outside. Um, our contract duration is 90 days. What the way we're looking at this is we'll get the contract started and it will be opened back before school starts again next year. So that is what we're anticipating. Staff does recommend to award the lowest responsible bid to RNL Construction and recommends to approve and authorize the execution of a construction contract to Wolf Creek Drainage Improvements. I'd be happy to answer any questions. So they obviously are, um, they are the lowest bid, but um, there's no concern that they are so much different than everyone else. I mean, it's a considerable no, no they're not. We did okay. go through and look at it, and it does appear to be in line. And the, and the people will have an alternate way of getting in and out, correct? Correct. Um, Beach Avenue, if you take that north, does lead straight to Washington Street. Mm -hmm. And there are other avenues. Boston does go straight to Aspen, but there are other avenues that, can, that they can, can come and go from. So what's the projected start date of this? Um, See, I, 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 you caught me off guard there for just a second. Let me think about that one. We're looking about 35 days after approval here. Okay. Thank you. I'll make a motion that we approve the contract. I'll second. Make a motion and a second. Roll call. Thank you. Mayor, just one point. Mm -hmm. Just to let council know, I would like for us to, to be giving the HOA some periodical updates on the construction, and that way they can pass it out to their members. Yes, sir. I can do that. We can reach back out to the HOA after the meeting tonight, let them know what's going on. Just keep them posted because obviously they do a pretty good job of keeping their residents up to date and by way of the group that they have. Yes, sir. We will do that. Thank you. If I may, I actually think this one warrants videos that you typically have us do. This would be a good one. Wolf Creek's a big subdivision, very large. Yes. Boston is a main street in there, so we, we will need to keep them updated routinely. Right. Yeah. But we've still got to maintain the integrity of the street, you know what I mean, and, and without fixing or repairing it, uh, we're going to lose that integrity. You do a good job, Pat. Thank yeah, you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pat. Um, item 9C, consideration, discussion, and possible approval of an authorization to execute construction contract with Schneider Electric for upgrades to the Bruckner Historical Museum and Rose District Electrical Infrastructure and signage and approve for authorization. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council, City Manager, Mr. Spurgeon. I am super excited to be here tonight <laughs> to talk to you about this, uh, this potential construction to start down in the Rose District. So I um, want to just put a few slides together. Um, basically, what we're doing is we're looking at a contract with Snyder Electric to do three main projects. A historical museum, it's an HVAC improvement. It replaces all three of the HVAC, the rooftop units, which are at age whenever we would typically replace them. So this is a standard thing for us. These units are not just your typical units, though. Uh, we're trying to control humidity and keep the museum at, uh, at, you know, at a humidity level and temperature year-round that's suitable for um, the artwork that they have in there. Also includes a building automation system. So we improved the HVAC to bring it up. We also need a way to control that and monitor it. So we're doing that with a building automation system that they can actually re access remotely or on site. So I think that's going to be something that they're going to be excited about. It'll also be something that our building maintenance team can utilize to log in and say, hey, you know, we, we, we had an alarm. We need to get in there and make a repair or take care of you. <clears throat> it also Part of the other issue that they've had ongoing for years now, and we've, we've tried different things to repair that, is the HVAC in the first floor in the lobby. It's either very hot or very cold, and it's always at the wrong time of year when it's one of those two <laughs> options. So this is a redesign. This is pretty major. This is taking and dropping down the front ceiling just a little bit. We're going to drop that. We're going to relocate ductwork, and we're going to fix that airflow, and we're going to feed more air to that. We're going to fix the returns, and I think this is really going to make an improvement for them. Um, <clears throat> Snyder Electric has, has reviewed it, but this also went through engineering first, and so they actually made similar recommendations. Snyder came in, gave us a second opinion, basically, that lined up with what we already had from uh, Sino Walk. So really excited about that piece of it. This same contract leads right into our Rose District uh, uh, 
signage. And so I'm skipping here. So I will go back to the Rose District panels. Downtown Rose District, there's seven electrical panels that we use to feed events, that we use to, uh, for our Christmas lights, for lighting. They have all the controls, and none of these controls are able to talk to one another, and we're also not able to access those remotely. This, is, this part of the, uh, the system is going to make it so that we can remotely log into an automation system. Um, if we think of the big events, I mean the one that, uh, that probably I stress about year-round besides... Uh, you know, Everything upcoming else. floats yeah. <laughs> and parades. Yeah. But uh, is, is those Christmas lights coming on at the exact same time? And so this alleviates that. It communicates between all seven panels, and it puts it so whenever we do that countdown, maybe I'm not quite as nervous as I have been for the last <laughs> few years. Will it also work where every plug-in in that electrical box you can actually plug into and they work? So we keep most of those off do, and except for events. And so yeah. whenever you have an event, we have building maintenance come out, and they have to manually go to each one mm -hmm. of the seven locations. Right. This will alleviate that. Oh, well, nice. but normally, like, say there's seven outlets in there, you can only plug in two or something like that. Will you be able to so this won't, plug multiple people into it? This won't fix the amp draw, okay. so we're not changing any breakers out. Or the now, light pole lights? It will. This, this could potentially. It does it initially, but the logic... Uh, the logic for that and the programming wouldn't be hard to add. I think it would probably be something that maybe we could tis, twist Roger Flood, who happens to be sitting in the back Roger. arm, to, <laughs> to add those points in there where we could do that. <laughs> so he, he's grading me back there right now as we go through this. Um, Roger, you, we have electrical plugins <coughs> in our light poles that do not work. So I thought it was low happen. voltage is what so they told me. So most of those are low voltage, and yeah. they're all GFI plugs. And GFI, I mean, they just have a limited life outside. And especially with different events, they're overloaded. Um, we, we go through once a year, sometimes twice a year, and building maintenance actually goes through, tests those, and replace them. So, but if we have an event that comes and they break one, we don't know about it. Somebody comes, we think we've turned it on, and, and we, we miss it potentially. I never got to use them personally. They always I said, no, it's just for our Christmas I'm lights. I'm like, why do we have them? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, we can. So that'd be good. It'll be good no, if we can so use them. I know it'll help. It'd be help great, Roger, if we could use them. Yeah, those. Roger, if you could fix yeah. that, that'd be awesome. So I think we could make that improvement just right away. I don't, I don't see any, any reason for that. So. Yeah. Well, it's not my problem anymore, but Deborah <laughs> may still have a problem. <laughs> so well, we've it is. I mean, like for the events when you have some of these news and you go to plug in and, you, and they don't work, Order. and you think it's on. Order. Yes. Well, it sounds like hey, we, we I have talk. some work to do. <laughs> it's not we'll, working. We'll put some effort in on that one. <laughs> and oh. Probably the last one that maybe this is one that the city manager came and he's like, Ryan, we've got to do something. And um, he really led the charge on us for this one to find a way to improve our Rose District sign. So we had the sign at the farmer's market. We also have the one up by Rib Crib. And so this package also includes some updates and revisions to that. So. Like what specifically? I mean, because I think those are beautiful. Yeah. So what exactly are, are you they changing? Uh, yeah, yeah. What are we doing oh, to those? The colors. Maybe. Oh, they'll be colorful. Ashley, oh, they'll go with our rose oh, district okay. colors. Yeah. Wait, so. there's more. There's more. Okay. There's more. So, <laughs> so this one just—it's. It, it, I've already pretty much covered this for you. This is over the historical. We're talking about replacing the three rooftop units. We're talking about the building automation, which we we talked about that control that it gives them. It does include test and balance. So we're going to go through. So that we're putting in, we're changing the airflow, they're gonna go in and verify that that's exactly what it's supposed to be. And then Snyder's responsible for the commissioning and testing of that system if you approve this this evening, so. Um, the Rose District, here we're talking about the signs. So here's your existing signs. These are very high maintenance items for us. Um, you, you may not know that, but uh, we have, everybody wants to go take their picture with it. I mean, this is a big part of downtown Broken, Broken Air in the Rose District. They, and the letters get damaged. They're, they yeah. have some age to it. The other problem we're having is the software for the lighting is, is dated. We aren't able to log into it. Actually, you had to have like Windows 95 to be able to get in. <laughs> IT tried to help us with a computer. <laughs> Scott, I don't know if you still back here. He's like, all right, Ryan, this is the only one we have. You can take it. And um, we just aren't able to communicate with it. So if we want to change the colors in these lights, we aren't able to do that today. And so we really wanted to bring that back up. We wanted to make it where also it was, you could change the colors in it remotely. So this is gonna have the same access from City Hall or wherever we choose, you can, you can tie into this um, through your computer, your cell phone. Uh, of course, they'll have limited access. Limited <laughs> access, you know. 
<laughs> but you'll, they'll be able to, if we wanted to do a rainbow of colors through there, if we wanted to do green, if we wanted to, you know, do something at Christmas time or different events, it'll be much easier to access and set up. So I'm really excited about that. The other thing that uh, actually Snyder came up with is using, instead of the letters having standoff, they're using solid acrylic that's about an inch thick. And so even if they get kicked, they can't smash it in because it's, it's a solid piece of, or, yeah, yeah, solid piece of acrylic there. So I'm really excited to see those improvements. That was something that the city manager really wanted. He still wanted to be backlit. We tried to find a way to backlight it. Snyder came up with that. Hey, we're going to use acrylic. It's still going to be backlit. We're still going to be able to control colors, and I think that's going to look great. Um, here's here's your panels that we talked about. So if we looked, if we went downtown, I actually took this this morning. You open it up. There's that little controller there, and you can see that screen's small. Not easy for building maintenance, or especially somebody if they had me go do it. You know, I'm gonna have to squint and get some readers. <laughs> this will this is gonna tie that in where we can remotely access it. So I'm excited to present all of these to you this evening. This is something that's been in the works, been talked about for about two years now. Um, be happy to answer any questions. We got to take care of the, the museum. Obviously, we've had problems in that area for many, many years, and this this does that. I want to thank Roger and, and Ryan, and obviously the Rose Dick District is who is who we are in many respects in terms of that they're our downtown and maintaining what we've always talked about doing. And so, taking care of what we have is very important, and that's why there is there is a cost associated with this. But to be able to use it, be able to to upgrade the infrastructure to accommodate the events that are happening is extremely important. That's why I ask you to. to after any questions to approve this. It's very difficult to give a speech from the third floor <coughs> but when they come on because you can't hear before the uh, units come <coughs> on, they're either too hot or too cold, or they're too loud, they're vibrating. So it really is time. So I appreciate that. When you say you're lower, because you can see from the third floor down <coughs> to the first floor, right? This is just above where the receptionist is. Yeah. So the first floor, where that first floor yeah, I'm sorry I, I didn't like, put a picture a of it. There? I thought it wow. was so, so it everything up above down. is going to stay. So this is just where the lobby is in the front, mm -hmm. where the receptionist mm -hmm. sits under, the doorway is, that ceiling there. It's probably about 12 foot. Oh, We're okay. going to drop it about 12 inches, maybe 16 inches. It's really going to depend on when they get in there and they demo that. And then... For us, building maintenance side, we're excited because we're not going to go back with a hard deck or sheetrock ceiling. We're going to go back with, with a ceiling grid. So if we need to get in there and, and work on lighting, or it's going to be more user-friendly as far as a servicing standpoint. I don't think externally somebody that hasn't been there before, or even if it's been a few years, you won't notice a difference. You will notice that it's hopefully more comfortable when you yeah. walk in. Sure. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve... The author to execute construction contract with Schneider Electric for upgrades to the Historical Museum and the Rose District electrical infrastructure. A second. Roll call. <coughs> All right. Consideration, discussion, and possible approval of five lay members as appointed by the mayor and confirmed by the city council to fill the expired terms of lay members on the Judicial Nominating Committee. Trevor. Uh, thank you, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Council Members, uh, Mr. Spurgeon. Um, our current municipal judge, Judge Edgar, after 23-plus years of service, uh, has decided to retire on June the 30th of 2024. As such, we need to reconstitute the Judicial Nominating uh, Committee. That's the process that we go through uh, to provide uh, recommend, uh, nominate recommendations to the mayor who can then appoint uh, the judge and then the alternate as well. Um, my understanding of the uh, nominations for the lay members at this point were uh, Dennis Hill, uh, Latanya Cundiff, Laura Greenleaf, Corey Els, and then Zane Anderson. And so what we're asking tonight is uh, for a vote of council uh, to appoint those lay members. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have on this item. So we're not doing the attorneys, just the lay members? Uh, the attorneys will be the next the item next on the agenda. Oh, okay. okay. All right. I'll make a motion to approve those five lay members. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. <coughs> okay. 
Um, item E is consideration discussion and possible action for the mayor to appoint four attorneys to fill expired terms as attorney members of the City of Broken Arrow Judicial Nominating Committee. Trevor? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as we just discussed, this is for the attorney uh, portions since we've already uh, appointed the lay, lay portions. Uh, the four uh, nominees uh, for the attorney members are Mark Harper, Robert Stubblefield, Stephen Gray, and Jared Cauley. Happy to answer any questions you may have on this item. Okay, we're, uh, we're thinking actually. They're all available. Uh, my understanding is they are. Okay, I thought Joy Thorpe was going to be one of them. I think she. Uh, Miss Thorpe was a lay member. Um, who, at least what I was she understanding. Actually, now she's an attorney. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, if you have other names that you wanted to uh, place on there, you, you certainly can do that at this point. And that's fine. I just had submitted that one for it to replace Steen. So I'm not sure where the one that re that's on there that replaced Steen. Okay. I, I apologize for the miscommunication. Um, the, the name that I had received, I believe, for Lori was uh, Jared Cauley. If that's, not, if that's incorrect. Well, if that, have... that's when I nominated, I sent it. There was an email we got, and I just sent it in to Lori. Okay. So what I need you to do, to do there, I'm sorry to put you in the position, is I just need you to name the four names that you want to have on there as the attorneys, uh, and then have a vote <laughs> of council members. Uh, well, I'm fine with Jared as well. I mean, that's fine. It just... I think we, when we sent it out, it was to be able to discuss, like, for me to be able to receive those, mm -hmm. and, and then, and so when I submitted, I hadn't received, I hadn't seen that, so when I, I sent in Joy, and okay. she, she said she could do it, but that's fine, she'll understand, but, so I'm fine with whoever. It, I texted you, Deborah back, I didn't send it to Lori, by yeah. person, so I didn't know. It's your uh, decision, Mayor, person. you have the, the right as the mayor to sure. put the, make the appointment uh, for the attorney, so, uh, if that was a miscommunication, uh, it would be, I'm sorry, your nominee was Joy Thorpe. Thorpe. Okay, so the attorney members to be nominated are Mark Harper, Robert well, Stubblefield. We can keep, we can keep Collie. That's fine. She'll understand. Like, she'll understand. It'll be fine. It's, it's totally I, your I'm decision. I'm fine either way, truly. I'm sure they're both too I'm, fine. Yeah. yeah. I don't. So it doesn't take what about, what it's about up to you, Mayor. The four names. What about the other ones? This. Are they, is their terms expired? No. The other so the terms for the attorneys expire May of 2024 okay. so um, the process will go along along farther than that so this would basically be a reappointment for Mark Harper Robert Stubblefield and Stephen Gray okay mm -hmm. and so we did have one opening that we just need you to tell us who you'd like to appoint mayor <laughs> <laughs> okay I, I, and I'm sure Jared isn't I mean he it's not going to be a big deal either yeah, to okay. him. So it's, okay. yeah, it's just putting you on the spot. Yeah. Okay. Well, a joy. Okay. So it, yeah. it's, if, if we just needed to have a vote on okay. those four names. I vote no. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make a motion we approve those four names. And you have the four names, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. A second. You second. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Roll call. <coughs> All right. Uh, item F. Consideration, discussion, and possible approval of resolution number 1568 authorizing city attorney to enter into a final journal entry of judgment in BC Land Holding Company versus the city of Broken Arrow. Trevor. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Back in September of 2023, the city had closed a temporary construction easement uh, in a turnaround uh, at a location that was a quarter mile south of Dearborn Street and one quarter mile east of Aspen Avenue. The city no longer requires this temporary uh, easement. The landowner is seeking to uh, vacate that easement uh, so that the land can return back to the, the homeowners there. Uh, we're recommending that you uh, authorize passage of resolution number 1568 so that we can enter into the agreed journal entry of judgment. Okay. Any questions? No. I move. I made the motion. Oh, we have a motion and a second. Roll call. There are no preview ordinances, no regular ordinances, remarks, and <coughs> inquiries by governing body members. 
You know, I have uh, one follow-up comment to uh, the uh, uh, our counselor that uh, celebrated the, with the uh, five-year uh, pen. Uh, I would just like to say that if people need to realize that, and I've seen a lot of councilmen come and go, that uh, the first four years are the most difficult of being on the city council. Uh, you step in here and, and you have to learn a complete new language uh, on the council, so it's very trying. And uh, Christy has done a, a great job in doing that. Yes. But one thing I've always said about Christy, whether you agree with her or not, she sticks with what she believes, and I've always appreciated that. So we didn't really make any comments at that time, but I'll tell you that I really appreciate you. Uh, I don't always agree, but most of the time I do. Right. Uh, but uh, I appreciate that. And, and it is a learning experience. And uh, I know you've got this upcoming election and all of that, and you just now got broke in. But uh, <laughs> uh, anyway. I just broke I just you wanted, in. I just, yeah. <laughs> I just want to uh, make sure that everybody knows that, you know what I mean, it is difficult to learn. Thank you. And from, from there, the next lot, 35 Thanks. years, uh, it's easy, you know. For me. <laughs> Um, I just want to say too. Yesterday we um, had a we all attended a groundbreaking for Regent Bank, and I'm so excited. I was ex you're always excited for new businesses to come to Broken Arrow, but they were so excited yeah. to be mm -hmm. in Broken Arrow yeah. and to be their flagship. flagship. Yeah, it was just um, it was it was a great groundbreaking, and we all got signed and books. The sun came and, out, right? Yes, yeah, so it was just it, it was, it was awesome. So yeah. um, that was a really neat experience, and those are the fun things too that we get to do as counselors is to welcome new businesses right. to our city and. Um, just wanted to say how welcome Regent Bank. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I, ha I can't let this meeting go by without um, kind of bragging on my daughter. So, and it's funny she texted me. She left. She was like, I was planning to speak, and I said, Well, they they didn't like the planning commission. They like she had to talk a lot. It was funny, and um, it was good. But actually, Lisa was with me when I watched her because I watched it on. We were coming home from D.C., and I'm, like, sitting watching it on my phone crying when she was doing planning commission. But so exciting to have this new business in, on Main Street that's going to be an indoor child play area, and it's going to have lots of fun things um, for ages 0 to 10 mainly. And just I was just thinking about, you know, we had PACAR Winch here celebrating their 100 years, and... And then Madison got approved for her specific use permit for her business. So that's that's kind of a neat, um, just it's kind of like the ends of both spectrums, so, or both ends of the spectrum. So it's very, very proud of her. And I wanted to put that on the record. Yes, yeah, she's doing a good job. Yeah. Well, and I wasn't here for the last council meeting, so I didn't have a chance to give an update. But I just wanted to thank everyone who came out to Shamrock. Um, we had a record breaking attendance of what, 18.9 thousand, they, they estimate it, which is insane. Just say 19. Huh? Just, Just say 19. 19,000 19, yeah. people <laughs> in five hours, so that's pretty pretty exciting. We got to grant two wishes, um, one of which was to a 92-year-old that had been without running water for three and a half years and was carrying buckets of water from his neighbor's house, and so we were able to grant him a wish, which is just, so when I'm not marrying, that's what I'm doing is granting wishes to veterans, and it's kind of always fulfilling in that way to just make a difference in uh, veterans lives that, like that so um, every year I say I'm never doing it again the, the event that is so um, we'll see <laughs> we'll see if I have a year 11 just but, stop saying that. yeah I know but otherwise it was a great event great weather and I'm just thankful that everyone came great. out and enjoyed it, it so it's fun yeah. next year you'll be able to use the outlets the next How exciting is that yes that'd be so cool <laughs> thank you Roger um, <laughs> city manager I have several mayor if I can um, first off, good evening, and I, I appreciate all the support for the committee organizations. Mm -hmm. um, they definitely need, need our support, and you're always there for them. The first thing I want to mention, and this is just a, a, a quick note, is regarding the New, or New Orleans Square block party. Um, been a lot of discussion about it, and I'm excited to share, and the council knows this, but I'm excited to share that actually it was going to be a two-night event. There's going to be fireworks on both evenings. There's going to be about a 10-minute fireworks show on Friday and then a 15-minute fireworks show on Saturday. And last week I was able to um, work with uh, Brian Dean, and we're going to have a Thursday night event. And actually we're going to have in town an emerging country star named Drake Milligan. He has coordinated that, and we're expecting probably three to 5,000 people to be there Thursday evening. 
and then we could see, you know, over the two days, we could see over 50,000 people that are going to be there for, for the shows. We've got some great entertainment. The TED team is going to be working with the hotel to try to promote this to actually have people spend the night and then utilize the, the, Uber, the, the Uber program that we have in place where they get, basically get a fry, free ride in the Rose District or, the, or New, Orleans, New Orleans Square. And so you're going to be hearing more about this. We're actually, I was talking today with the Vice Mayor, and we have sent flyers around, but we're going to make sure we send flyers around again because we want all those businesses somehow to figure out what niche they can have to be, mm -hmm. to be a part of this. And, you know, as I've said to you, my ultimate goal is eventually to have two different bands going on in different parts of the, of the, of the square mm -hmm. to where whatever genre of music's playing, you can go over there, and then we have food trucks, and that's something that we keep growing this every single year. And it's people are putting it on their calendar. We had 37,000 people approximately last year, and so I'm anticipating that we'll, people will we'll put this on calendar. A lot of people said they're going to wait before they go to Lake for the 4th of July to be able to go to one of the two days. And so I wanted to let the council know. A lot of this you, you already aware, but I want to make sure the public knows. Um, New Orleans Square, the advisory committee, I'll have something out to them this week. Hopefully by the middle of the next month they'll have their first meeting. And once again, their focus is, is, two, is two items. Number one, taking a look at the zoning overlay. And then secondly, is see if there are any additional improvements they want to recommend to the council as a part of the bond package. If you remember, there were several million dollars that were included that helped pay for a portion of the, the reconfiguration of the intersection. And so that, that's going to be a good group to get them back together. And, and I'm hoping to get, to get them finished up by the early fall. And so that way they can get us recommendation, we can get any estimates, and then we'll have that as a part of the bond package that I'll be presenting to you in the summer of next year. The next thing I want to mention is I'm, I'm in the process right now of trying to actually uh, secure a, a new van for the senior center. I think it is absolutely necessary. Uh, we have the funding to be able to do it. Uh, this is something that needs that we need if we're going to have a pilot program, which eventually hopefully will be Uber. We need to support our seniors. And so I've got some funding to be able to do that. And Ryan gave me. He was excited to give me some estimates earlier earlier today. So um, I, I appreciate that, Ryan. Uh, farmers market starts Saturday, uh, kicks off, starts Saturday, runs through October, and then the following Tuesday, the Tuesday evening market starts. And so what's interesting, I learned, and I had, I'd forgotten about it, is that uh, when this first started, we were lucky to have 10 vendors. Now almost every single weekend that, that it's in session, we have approximately 50 vendors. Mm -hmm. And it continues to be that draw during those months that helps maintain the the quality of life that we talk about so important in terms of our identity and it's an amazing not only gathering for for goods and for goods and services but also for people to get together and, and have fellowship so i wanted to let you know that's happening um next thing is the city hall initiative as you know uh, there's a that's a great group of folks i mean there's a lot of folks on there that have some some serious construction experience and charlie bright will be holding uh, the first meeting hopefully in the next month or so and the, once again the goal is for them to bring you back a recommendation by the end of the year on which option we can look at in terms of how to proceed with the city hall in in 2026 so i just want to let you know about that um jennifer rush and charlie bright are not here tonight because and i i've asked them and they are they're actually speaking and attending at the associated building and contractors the abc meeting this evening um, just to for charlie to, to be welcomed as a new engineering instruction director and also just to, to build relationships and because a lot of those folks that are that are there either live in broken air or have business in broken air so it's a, it's a very big group and I, inevitably one of you is going to run into somebody for the end of the week and say something and i just wanted to make sure that, that you knew um the next thing is i just want to send a shout out to the kobe u graduates that recently graduated from the the, the revamped class and we'll be starting the new class which i'll get the reception for the council members to meet them shortly after we get started you know and I implemented it except for directors you have to complete Kobe U before you can be eligible to apply for for leadership or Canero you know because of our secession plan that we have which I'm going to talk about here in a second uh, is, is paying dividends in terms of people being ready to step up into leadership positions and so uh, I can't wait to, sh to share the new class with you uh, it's interesting as I every single one of them I think actually applied to go to LBA so it's just interesting to see how excited they were to continue their journey. And then the last thing I want to mention, and you know this, but I want to share with the public because I'm excited, uh, Rocky Hinkle is our new community development director. Uh, Rocky will have been with the city uh, six years in May. 
Uh, he came to us uh, from the community that will soon be the, the fourth largest city in, in, in Oklahoma <laughs> when we become third. Um, they are the fourth. Yeah. You know, I care very much about Rocky. He, I, 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 I could go on all day long about how much I appreciate the job that he does. I've seen him grow. I, I've seen him uh, develop an affection for this community that uh, is inspiring to me and a lot of other people about how much he cares about doing the things that are hard. I mean, there's nothing that his people do that is really not easy. Um, and so I appreciate, I've always appreciated about how you've gone about doing that, Rocky. And I know that working with Amanda and, and Grant and, and Farhad and the other members of the team, I think you're going to do the exact same thing in community development. And I'm a little selfish here because by promoting Rocky, mm -hmm. actually, I, I actually have somebody that I also care very much about and trust, and that's Tim Wilson to serve as the acting uh, Street and Stormwater Director. And I've worked with Tim through floods, uh, through storms, through ice storms. And if you want to talk about somebody that uh, is, is ready to step in and lead, uh, Rocky has trained him well, and Tim's got the right character to hold that position. So I'm glad to see that Tim agreed to do that. And so I'm just proud of both of them. And, and I know the council is you get to work with them um, quite often. So uh, these are examples of Tim and Charlie and just actually preparing themselves to step into leadership positions and couldn't be happier. So congratulations, Rocky. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations, guys. Appreciate and you too, Tim. So that's all I have, Mayor. Okay. And we have no executive session, so I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. A motion and a second. Roll call. Call the Broken Arrow City or Broken Arrow Municipal Authority meeting to order. Roll call. Green. Here. Ford. Here. Parks. Here. Gillespie. Here. Wimpy. Here. Are there any items to be removed from the consent agenda? <clears throat> to approve the consent agenda. Second. Okay. A motion and a second. Roll call. We have no public hearings, appeals, presentations, recognitions, or awards. There's no general authority business. Any remarks by governing body members? City manager. I just want to mention one more thing. I thought I'd take a break <coughs> for a second so we can move on. <laughs> Is the results of the survey are in? And the council is going to be seeing the results next week, and there's going to be a special meeting on the 16th to actually have the consultant that Aaron McCulloch is, is, is working with to present those results. But I want to make sure council get to see them. I'm very, I'm very pleased with the results of this, with the survey. Uh, there's some great, there's some great responses. And obviously, I'm excited to say that there are some areas that obviously are not going to be much of a surprise in terms of uh, how we can continue to better serve the citizens. And there's some good feedback on, on potential bond projects. And I think it's going to allow us to do some micro questions or micro surveys from there so we can build the bond package and then follow up and ask some more specific questions about uh, services that we provide to find out a little bit more because a lot of our questions were general in nature. But I can't wait for the council with Aaron and, and Kenny Schwab next week with Lori Hill to, to show those to the council members so you can dig into them to be prepared for the, the special meeting on the 16th. Okay. Thank you, sir. There's no executive session. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. Roll call. Call the Broken Area Economic Development Authority to order. Any uh, roll call. Green. Here. Ford. Here. Parks. Here. Gillespie. Here. Wimpy. Here. Any items to be removed from the consent agenda? Move to approve the consent agenda. Second. There a motion and a second. Roll call. Uh, there are no public hearings, appeals, presentations, recognitions, or awards. Uh, no general authority business. Any remarks from governing body members? Any manager? None. None? Okay. And yeah. um, we do have an executive session. <coughs> Make a motion to clear the room for executive session. Second. We have a motion and a second. Roll call. I'm sorry, who made that motion second? Uh, Lisa made the motion. Christy, Christy seconded. seconded. Christy seconded. Thank you. Green? Yes. Ford? Yes. Parks? Yes. Gillespie? Yes. Wimpy? Yes. Mm -hmm.